Okay, we're live. It's James speaking, uh, tradingsites.io. Got another great video for you. If you're interested in all of this AI stuff that can help you start building grow your education business. And today, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about a new release of ChatGPT that came out uh, on the weekend. And this particular one is called O3 Mini. So if you want to find out all the technical stuff about it, I don't recommend that you do, but I just want to show you where it is. You can go to openai.com and uh, right up here, and that will bring you to this page where you can look down uh, and see O3 Mini. And this is actually just a good page to look at because you will find their stuff like Operator, with a, uh, which is basically a browser agent, so an agentized uh, ChatGPT item is there. Uh, and they did deep research today, but the one we're looking at is O3 Mini. And what is this about? Um, O3 Mini is really a big change for us as video creators, course creators, uh, content creators when we're using it for things like how do I create a video script or how do I put together a syllabus or how do I add a checklist or summaries and takeaways for courses. All of that stuff that we would normally do using the regular ChatGPT uh, and then have to really work at getting formatted and created and organized so it sounds like us and really looks like us. ChatGPT4 was perfect at that in some respects because it saved us a bunch of time but it also required, required us to do a whole bunch of extra work to get it the way that we wanted. And the part that's cool for us now is this brand new O3 mini model works in a fundamental different way that removes a whole bunch of extra work for us and gives us much better responses. So let's take a look first at understanding how the two work. And then I'm going to show you some examples of what happens when we use the same prompt from uh, ChatGPT using 4.0 and another one using the O3 model. Uh, and you'll see the differences in how they work. So here's the first thing to kind of understand when we're doing this. If I put together a prompt in ChatGPT and I make that prompt, what's happening is I write in, in a particular example, uh, we'll just open this one up. I may message in the bottom. These are examples we're going to go over, but in the ChatGPT, I just put a request in and the normal 4.0, what it does is it regurgitates or responds to us. And the quality of that response and the content of that response is determined by a couple things. One is how good a prompt we give. And that's why prompt engineering and all these prompt frameworks, everyone was working on really hard at the start. So the better the prompt, the better the response. And the second thing is the large language model or the amount that the large language model like ChatGP was trained on. So if you had a model that had lots and lots of experience with lots and lots of information and you had a specific request, it wouldn't think about it. It would just basically give you the request. And that's how ChatGPT4 works in a general way. Um, there's some additional things obviously have been added, but just to give you an idea, it's prompt response, prompt response, and that's how it works. Now, that's a really great thing, but again, the responses that you get are always based on how good the request is. You do a crappy request or one that's not clear or one that there's a lot of options on, it's going to spit something back to you that may not necessarily uh, appeal or answer the request that you've made, and you've got to try and dig around to get it all done. So what happened is in this new O3 model that they brought out, the one that I was just telling you about right here, what they did is they said, you know what, we're going to do two really unique things for anyone using this AI. The first one is we're actually going to think before we respond. And then after we've thought about it and give you the response, we're going to explain how we came up with the response. So think of it this way. If uh, I was to ask you a question, I would hope that you would consider the question, who it was coming from, what it was about, what are the options in the response that I had were, and which would be best in this unique situation. If I was using ChatGPT and I ask you the question, you would just blurt something back based on whatever that first thing that came into your mind was, not about the four options, the pros and cons. You wouldn't have done any of that. You just blurted it back and you wouldn't have given me any a reason to why you said it. It just came out. That's ChatGPT 4.0. The new version, the three model, what it does is it evaluates everything first, then it gives you a higher level response, tells you why it gave it to you, and allows you to go from there. So it's a real conversation with a real person as opposed to a machine now. And let's take a look how this applies specifically if you were doing something like 
creating a syllabus for a course or maybe a video script. Let's take a look and see how this works together. So what I did beforehand is just to do this and speed up some time. What I did is I said, you know what? Let's put together a particular prompt here. And it was, you're helping me create a video course called Beginner Photography Techniques. Please, uh, before giving any suggestions, I want you to pause and think carefully, follow these steps. First, identify the target audience and think about their specific needs and challenges. Second, consider third, et cetera, et cetera, and explain the processes beforehand. So this is a really, really, really complex prompt specific to ChatGPT4. Now watch what happens. It responded right away, didn't think about anything, it said, let's break it down. And it regurgitated what we had about the target audience and then basically gave us some ideas on what it might be. So it didn't think any more on this. It just basically took technical jargon, constant equipment, quick results, creative blocks, stuff that kind of made sense to it. And it took the exact three steps or the things it had looked at that I asked for. It responded to my request. Okay, now what happened is, if I said, this time I'm helping you or create a video course for beginners uh, and I want you to think carefully first go through and then watch what happened in the response. And I want you to do this yourself. So think about anything that you do in terms of a script or a syllabus and then basically ask ChatGPT 3 and 4 and you'll notice what happens at the start. This one says, reason about beginner photography course structure for four seconds. And it says, okay, let me see. The task requires explaining the thought process for each step before outlining the course, but then guidelines suggest not showing the chain of thought. This seems contradictory. So navigating the instructions. So it's thinking about the processes. I'm piece, piece, piecing together how to align guidelines, disallow reasoning back and forth and clarifying. So below is an overview of how I approach the task along with my reasoning for each step. So it goes through the things and the reasoning with it and shows the steps that it does and gone through. And look what it says at the end. It gives us a draft outline subject to clarification. And then it says at the end, it says, please let me know your thoughts on the clarifying questions and adjustments you like. Once I have your feedback, I can fine tune that outline further. So this is not blurred out. This is actually having it go, well, wait a second, what are the pieces that I need? Or how come it's not working? Or what else is am I missing? My reasoning, should it be a foundation, practice reinforcement? And it's making suggestions on how you might want to teach it. It's not just telling you what to do. So anytime you're thinking of something now, take a look at both responses that you get, one from the ChatGPT4 model and one from the O3 model. And you're going to see the answers in the new one are far more thought out and expanded because it's going to ask for clarification information and let you know why it's put the responses together that way. And this does a couple really neat things for you if you're creating online course content. Here's the first one. When you go through this, you, the instructor, the teacher, are far more involved in the responses that you're getting back. This makes it far more authentic and allows you to clarify the context and what it is that you want a response before getting it. This makes it easier to stand apart from someone who has put a good prompt into ChatGPT4 and copied and pasted what it got regurgitated. So not only is it going to be more authentic to you, it's going to be better content because it's getting you to think about how can I be creative and how can I use what I'm being prompted to consider to expand my original thinking. So play around with this. It's ChatGPT4 is the old one. The previous one, again, was the ChatGPT 4.0. We're looking at the O3 Mini. It should be available to you. Just go back and forth between the two and see what happens when you're using these tools. And pay attention because the next videos that I'm doing are going to show you how you can take advantage of using this to completely change the actual content that you put into your courses. This is James. Make sure to join uh, trainingstates.io forward slash join. Free community, all this information, all my resources are there for you. And of course, like and subscribe to the channel. I got all sorts of great stuff for you to help start, build and grow your education business. So take care, expect the best. We'll be back shortly with another great video.